<laughs> it is I, the steam cleaner, here to clean steam. <laughs> Now I'm not saying I'm right about everything, just most things. Like when I warned last year that if steam keeps up with its lackadaisical attitude, with its anything goes mentality, politicians, legislators would start getting interested in steam. And here we are with UK politicians eyeing steam right now because of a game called Rape day! It starts. We will also finally be talking about the Epic Game Store and how that ties into everything. Because right now, screw Steam. So saith the cleaner. Back up! For the first time in a long time, Steam is facing potentially real competition in the PC digital distribution market. As well as GOG and Discord, Epic Games has been making serious waves with its own storefront, leveraging the ridiculous popularity of Fortnite in the same way Valve once leveraged its own games. Back when Valve did indeed make games, Artifact doesn't count. Epic's been throwing its money around too, with a generous revenue split offered to developers and the finagling of some damn big exclusives. Most notoriously, Metro Exodus was a timed exclusive on the Epic Store, and Ubisoft will be skipping Steam for The Division 2. A number of indie titles would rather be exclusive to the Epic Store as well, with Shakedown Hawaii being the latest to announce a timed exclusive. Meanwhile, some developers and publishers are choosing to just go it alone. Bethesda is attempting to push its own launcher for games like Fallout 76, likely inspired by the success EA has had with Origin. And while I have an issue with the inconvenience of fracturing people's game libraries, and I've got an issue with the constant need to make account after account to keep up with new games in this industry, I think I'm past the point of caring when it comes to Steam itself missing out on games. Steam is a fucking joke as far as I'm concerned, a mess of bigoted bullshit and broken games, utterly taken over by piss takers who are not in the business of producing entertainment, but of simply seeing how far they can push Valve's pathetically flimsy boundaries. Valve is the drunk sheriff of a lawless town. It wears the star on its jacket, it's nominally in charge, it may even throw the occasional baddie in jail, but it's proven unwilling to fundamentally clean up the streets it's meant to oversee. As Valve continues to bury its head in the sand and allow almost any trash, no matter how badly made or disingenuously edgy, to stink up the Steam storefront, bad actors masquerading as game developers have free reign to essentially take the piss at the company's expense. Steam appears to be a race to the bottom now where self-styled developers experiment to see who can get away with the worst behaviour. Years ago when Steam first opened the floodgates and became a free-for-all, people welcomed the new open approach. For too long had Valve restricted who could sell games on their store, keeping their digital distribution service a gated off club. But because moderation and the game industry don't get along, because everything has to be a matter of extremes, the problem of restriction was replaced with the exact opposite problem, that of total relaxation. Like a very tired anus. And Steam has relaxed its anus so hard it shat its pants. I first started talking about Steam's quality control problem roughly five years ago. Back then, the conversation revolved around such games as Earth Year 2066, games so broken and lacking in content they barely qualified as games, attempting to sell themselves to gullible or less informed Steam browsers. Earth Year 2066 was a visually painful thing to play, with quasi-functional effects and violent camera movement. The barely working shooter combat took place on one tiny map with nothing to stop you falling off the harsh edge of said map and slowly plummeting through the sky forever. It was $20 before it eventually got pulled from Steam for dishonest marketing. What the fuck?
Well, at least we got a nice view of the entirety of that fucking map. It's strange to feel nostalgic for the days of Earth Year 2066, the days where a game like Airplane Simulator was the biggest head turner on Valve's storefront. Bizarre, broken games that were at least funny in a sort of despicable way. Steam had a major quality control problem back then that reflected poorly on the platform and buried genuine games made with actual effort, but at least nobody had to talk about Rape Day. In the past five years, Steam's only gotten worse and the games have gotten way less funny. Most of the poor quality games stopped being even vaguely noteworthy when they all became asset flips. Games made wholesale from store-bought items found via Unity or Unreal to the point where some quote-unquote games on Steam were just default tutorial maps bought from a third party and renamed to look like original work. Over the years, Valve has been criticised for its hands-off approach to moderating the content it sells, to the point where many of the people calling me an alarmist or a bad censorship man five years ago actually agree today that it's bloody ridiculous and that Steam needs some fucking standards. Valve, however, doesn't want standards, or at least it only wants the barest minimum. In September of 2018, the company stated its commitment to letting absolutely anything go up on Steam, claiming that alongside user filters, the algorithms would do the job of quality control. Bear in mind, of course, that Google thinks algorithms can do the job of moderating YouTube. And look how that's fucking turned out. Unless it's what Valve calls straight-up trolling, any old toss can go up on Steam via an automated process called Steam Direct. After paying a fee, anyone regardless of credentials can sell their game on Steam with practically no oversight. Valve claims it checks each game to make sure they work before they're sold, but they don't even do that, as a number of games make it to launch day without so much as a working executable in their files. These days, developers such as Tero Lunker flood the service with games so broken they're downright surreal. Indie developers who actually care about their work would rather sell games on the Nintendo Switch than Steam, and there's the racist and homophobic shit that's clogging up the rest of it. Steam has come under fire for allowing such games as Gay World or Aid Simulator to appear in its listings. Hate groups have flourished in Steam's community, not just because Valve's rules are lax, but because they barely even enforce the rules they do have. As a company, Valve is looking lately like the consummate corporate coward, too afraid of looking like it stands for anything or believes in anything, even if such beliefs are really straightforward, such as racist games are probably bad for us to sell. Valve only steps in after immense public pressure, removing games once they're already attracting a groundswell of negative attention that makes Steam as a service look absurd, unsafe, and poorly maintained. For days up until its removal, Rape Day was but the latest Steam shitstorm. A visual novel about controlling, and I quote, the choices of a sociopath during a zombie apocalypse. You can verbally harass, kill people, and rape women as you choose to progress the story. Now it's a bad idea to be seen selling this game on your storefront. Do you know how I know it's a bad idea? Because it's obviously a bad fucking idea. It's called Rape Day for crying out loud. Imagine opening up the Nintendo Switch storefront to find Rape Day nestled in next to Super Mario Odyssey. Imagine the PlayStation Store, which has sold some absolute shit of its own, popping up a game literally called Rape Day for sale. Not even the Xbox One would go for that game, and the Xbox One went for Crackdown fucking 3. Just imagine you've made a game, you've put your heart and soul into it, you've made some, I don't know, they're normal normally some fucking 8-bit platformer, you've made one, you really like it, it's a nice game, and then you're listed next to Rape Day or Aid Simulator. Imagine how it must feel for any developer to get lumped in with those games. And I've seen the algorithms sort genuine games in with shitty asset flips and these edgelord games before. I know I'd find it dis fucking heartening. Lately, some people have been trying to defend these games as free speech, which they only started doing once the asset flips and blatantly broken games got racist and homophobic. Now people are going to bat for asset flips. Nobody went to bat for the slaughtering grounds when it got removed from Steam, but people will go out of their way to defend Aid Simulator these days. To that subsect of people, I do see you, by the way. I see what you're doing. Everyone was on board and cheering when it was just commoner garden asset flips I was mocking and criticising and saying should be fucked off. But the moment one of them calls themselves Aid Simulator, oh, then it's a freeze. Then I'm a bad censorship man. I see what you do. It's so obvious. But in any case, this isn't 
a free speech issue at all. It's a marketing issue. It's an issue of image. And no business in its right mind should want to even be vaguely associated with a game designed entirely around sexually assaulting people. That Valve was radio silent for days since Rape Day's discovery and only stepped in to deal with the game at the very last minute is a fucking terrible look for a company that specialises in bad looks. To give you an idea of how toxic Rape Day is, even the game's fucking developer agrees it shouldn't have been on Steam. I think I might agree with Steam that my game is not the right fit for a distribution site that is marketed at the general masses and children, said the developer known only as Deskplant. My next move is to sell the game on my own site. Maybe that would have been a better move for me from the start. Yeah, that's the fucking maker of Rape Day agreeing that Steam is the wrong place for it. Almost as if they were doing all this to make a point. So I welcome the Epic Store, is what I'm saying here, and I don't blame a single studio for choosing it over Steam anymore, because when one service keeps making headlines for all the exclusives it's getting, and another service keeps making headlines for games about school shootings and sexual assault, where would you rather sell your product? And this folks, is why it's a marketing issue and not a free speech one. Because who in their right fucking mind would prefer the store with the latter associations? A store that takes a 30% cut compared to the 12% taken by the store that doesn't have to regularly remove games with names like Rape Day. Aside from not risking your game listed in the same space as a school shooting game, aside from the generous revenue split, aside from the waiving of Unreal Engine royalties, the Epic Store is just straight up not filled with fucking garbage that pushes genuine games out of the spotlight. Epic doesn't have a feature that lets developers continually and endlessly alter their release dates to keep pushing their games right back to the top of the pile over and over. Epic isn't saturated with asset flips and Unity tutorial maps masquerading as original work, not yet. It's not so flooded and so poorly curated that a number of indie developers have completely given up hope for their success on the platform. Metro Exodus was handled poorly, that much is certain. Being listed on Steam for ages and then pulling out less than a month before launch was shitty PR on Deep Silver's part. But going forward, I simply can't find it in my heart to blame any developer or publisher who takes Epic up on their offer. It's too good a deal and comes without all the baggage, bullshit and bad imagery that is now Steam's stock and trade. Steam is so bad, the developer of Rape Day agrees they shouldn't have gotten as far with it as they did. Think about that. Truly think about how perfectly ludicrous a scenario that is. Competition for Steam was always coming in the end. The empire long divided must unite, long united must divide, thus it has ever been. We saw this in television. How Netflix initially collected all the TV and movies under the sun before losing much of it to the likes of Amazon Video and Hulu, while companies such as HBO and more recently Disney set to work on their own proprietary services. Netflix its empire divided, stepped up its original programming to offer self-produced exclusives. What Netflix didn't do was give any turd with a video camera full license to throw whatever old shit they want on Netflix sight unseen though they did give Jeff Dunham a special. And for the free speech warriors, I've got to wonder, do they consider what Netflix does censorship? Is it censorship if a TV network decides it doesn't want to commission a TV show? Is that censorship? Apparently, if you don't allow absolutely everything, if you, if you don't have an anything goes approach to entertainment distribution, you're censoring things. Was Carnival cancelled or censored? The correct answer, of course, is that it was cancelled. I am, of course, being a little bit facetious with my example, but the point is, is that no platform out there, no entertainment platform out there that wants to avoid trouble and a load more work for itself has an anything goes approach. You know, shop. If you just want to look at Steam as a, as a distributor, as a storefront, no shop has an anything goes approach. When I turned up to Lane Bryant with a box full of my used underwear, was I refused? Or was I censored when they said they wouldn't put them on their shelves as luxury thongs? As I warned last year, regulation could very well come for Steam. Companies hate self-regulation and hate third-party regulation even more, yet can never work out how the former could counteract the latter. In the aftermath of Rape Day, UK politicians are now gunning for Valve, just like I warned. But maybe that's what Valve wants. An entity that will take regulation out of their hands. A third party they can pass the buck to and shift blame if and when 
when Steam gets moderated, because Valve is incapable of even taking a stand on a game about raping women. It's just that spineless. At this rate, it would appear Steam welcomes government regulation, because it sure as shit has done nothing to prevent such a thing, only encourage it through sheer complacency and cowardice. Screw Steam! As I've said with the loot boxes, I'm not necessarily in favour of government regulation, I'm just warning that that's the likely outcome of companies refusing to regulate themselves. Loads of people said I was wrong when I warned that regulation could come for loot boxes, and yet here we are. And loads of people said I was wrong for warning that regulation could come for Steam, and now we have politicians eyeing Steam. The culture to seek forgiveness rather than permission is a stain on an industry that otherwise has the potential to be a real force for good, said SNP MP Hannah Bardell. And it is that attitude, that do it now and worry about the consequences later, that has landed many companies into a lot of trouble over the years. And yet companies don't learn. Or they don't want to learn, they just care about those short-term gains, so let's make the money now and, yes indeed, worry about the consequences later. That's the very attitude that has fucked up the game industry from beginning to end, that keeps fucking up the game industry. Short-sighted bollocks. I've no patience for that sort of thing, and no sympathy for any company that gets right royally fucked as a direct result of their own lackadaisical attitudes. So screw Steam. Ugh, you can't, you can't breathe in this thing. They, they didn't put, they didn't put nose hole breathing out anything for the mask. Oh, just hold it up to my face like that. There we are. So, with regards to Steam, I'm starting to think that maybe the ESRB is going to have to get involved. The ESRB was here to prevent politicians from being interested in the game industry to uh, a legislative degree. Uh, but, you know, it's open season on Steam. And I know who's going to get the blame for it if Steam ends up legislated or if the ESRB has to get involved and that dicks over indie developers. I'll get the blame from some sectors of the internet. Me, the bad censorship man, the bad censorship man, when really all I've been doing is pointing out the mistakes that are leading us to a situation where restrictions will occur. Never has a messenger been riddled with more bullets than Jim fucking Sterling's son. And that might sound arrogant, that might sound self-aggrandizing, and it is. Thank God for me.